Lack of fresh water is a global problem for all of humanity. Every year, this problem is felt more and more acutely. Only 3% of the water on Earth is potable. Of that, most of it is essentially inaccessible, as it's trapped in glaciers. Less than half of 1% of the water on Earth is all that remains as drinkable water to be divided among the 7 billion people on the planet. But what if the world's oceans were to become fresh, drinkable water? Take a deep breath. You have to face reality. And who knows how strong this information tsunami will be. So, how did the oceans become salty in the first place? Indeed, almost 4 billion years ago, all the water on the surface of the Earth was fresh. But volcanoes erupted, spewing out countless millions of cubic meters of magma and hot gases. A chemical cocktail of chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and other compounds fell into the ocean waters in the form of acid rain. This rain eroded the crystalline rocks of the Earth's crust, freeing up magnesium, potassium, and calcium. As a result of these chemical reactions with solid earthen rocks, acids began to form salts. Now, there's so much salt in the oceans that if you tried to distribute it across all of the Earth's landmass, this layer of salt would be as high as a 40-story building. So, let's turn back the clock. Close your eyes. Imagine that you're at the ocean. There's a sandy beach, a hot sun beating down, and turquoise waves lapping at the shore. You're thirsty, so you just go to the ocean, scoop up some water into your palms, and enjoy the taste of crystal clear water. What would happen if this fantasy could become reality? Well, unfortunately, there are approximately 22,000 species of fish that require both salt and fresh water. Salmon, sturgeon, striped bass, and other fish usually live in the sea and have thick skin through which salt passes with difficulty. But to spawn, they must go up a river. But the rest of our marine inhabitants prefer one habitat, and that is salt water. And there are so many more of them, 230,000 known marine species, and about 2 million still unknown to science. In marine animals, tissues contain large amounts of salt. If they're put into fresh water, then the salt contained in their tissues will pass out through their skin into the fresh water. Their tissues will be damaged, cease to fulfill their functions, and the animals will die. As a result, the food chain will collapse. Mankind would lose one of its most important sources of nutrition. Animals whose diet consists mostly of fish will die. About 700 million people will lose their main source of income, possibly condemning them to hunger, poverty, and even death. Desalination of the oceans will affect plant life as well. Underwater algae play a crucial role in photosynthesis, the process that supplies our planet with oxygen. Algae used to ocean water will die in fresh water, which means that there will be less oxygen on the planet and more carbon dioxide. Under such conditions, the entire food chain will collapse since most of the plants will just cease to exist. The greenhouse effect will intensify, the planet will overheat, and the world as we know it will halt in anticipation of climate shocks. Hurricanes, tornadoes, and typhoons all will become commonplace. The climate on the planet will never be the same. In the south, people will begin to freeze from the cold, and in the north, they'll be worn out by the heat. With a decrease in the amount of salt, the density of water will change, which will inevitably lead to unprecedented earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Fresh water is less dense, which means that the Arctic ice sheet will drop 10 centimeters into the water, and the largest tidal wave that the planet has ever seen will cover the land. 
but it's unlikely that a person will have to suffer for a very long time from these natural disasters. Most likely, man will not remain around long after the very beginning, when the world will be left without plants and marine inhabitants, and climate change occurs. So, you might think this is all a little far out, but alas, the global warming process has already started the desalination of the Atlantic Ocean. Some scientists believe that warming will lead to a change in the Atlantic currents, which means that cold water will bring currents to the equatorial region, while warm water rushes towards the poles, exacerbating the melting of glaciers associated with atmospheric phenomena. Due to the addition of large quantities of fresh water into the ocean, traditionally cold regions may find themselves in a zone where the climate has flipped from cold to hot. If the warming continues, then mankind is in for a change in climatic zones. Scientists have not yet been able to determine the probability of such a scenario. But a professor at the University of Potsdam, one Stefan Ramsdorf, compares this forecast with the threat of a nuclear explosion. And even if its probability is only 5%, this is an alarm bell. The waters of the Southern Ocean surrounding Antarctica are already becoming diluted with fresh water. Back in the 1970s, in the ice of the Weddell Sea, Satellites recorded a huge, non-frozen area the size of New Zealand. But today, there's no trace of it. Experts studied a huge number of measurements taken from ships and autonomous ocean robot floats in the seas around Antarctica over a period of 60 years to understand why this phenomenon has not appeared again. The results showed that since 1950, the surface of the ocean has become less and less salty. This layer of fresh water on the surface of the ocean prevents mixing with the warm water underneath. As a result, heat from the depths of the ocean can't rise and melt the winter ice of the Antarctic. And therefore, that ice-free polynia, according to scientists, may have been the last in the Southern Ocean. But if it's impossible to desalinate the entire world ocean, might it be possible to obtain fresh water from the sea in a controlled volume? It might seem that it would be difficult to remove, let's say, 35 grams of salt from each liter of seawater, wouldn't it? Technologies to turn seawater into fresh water do already exist. But despite all the efforts made, desalination of seawater remains an expensive endeavor. Distillation and the reverse osmosis method require a huge amount of electricity, and the purification systems quickly become clogged and therefore unusable. Along with the sea water, sea life also enters desalination plants, which at this time means that more than 3 billion fish and other marine organisms die annually. In addition, concentrated desalination waste is discharged back into the water, which adversely affects the marine flora and fauna. But scientists continue to work on improving this technology. In 2017, British scientists invented the world's first graphene desalination filter, which can replace existing, less efficient devices. And in 2018, chemists from Texas and two independent Australian universities proposed a fundamentally new technological process using organometallic frame membranes, which will produce fresh water with minimal energy consumption and maximum efficiency. Canadian and Australian scientists went even further and announced the possibility of using solar energy to desalinate seawater. The Canadians only needed one kilowatt of electricity, seawater, a shallow artificial pond with a black bottom, and a pump to produce fresh water. Their Australian counterparts created a new device in the form of a disc with a surface of filter paper. Special carbon nanotubes are distributed across this disc. The finest cotton threads absorb salt water, push 
crystallized salt to the edges and collect fresh water in the center of the disc. The collected salt is then removed from the device. Thus, an uninterrupted desalination process is achieved, resulting in almost 100% efficiency. But most importantly, the use of this device is possible at any level of sunlight, which means that it can be used in different parts of the world and not just in hot and sunny regions. The technology of recent years has yet to prove its effectiveness when used on an industrial scale. But if everything works out, then perhaps the problems of freshwater shortages will be solved. Is it true that there are megatons of water in the world that mankind cannot use for his own purposes? And is it true that to make fresh water you need expensive and yet ineffective technologies? I must admit, in my opinion, we shouldn't interfere with the delicate balance of the oceans because its uncontrolled desalination would cause the most incredible and undesirable consequences. The best solution is to take care of the water supplies that we have now so that our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren won't have to worry about where to get their drinking water or be shattered and spent from unquenchable thirst. And what are you doing on the other side of the screen right now to conserve water? Let us know in the comments. If you like the video, then the best way to thank us is to like and subscribe to our channel so as not to miss the next exciting episode.